Hello. Right, tonight's guest, uh, we've got Siobhan Hunter, who plays for Hibs Ladies. She's also played in the Champions League and scored in the Champions League as well, eh? <laughs> uh, yeah. So who, 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 is it Slavia Prague you scored against, eh? Yeah, Slavia Prague. Aye. I've got another question to ask you before before we get into it. Uh, how many times, truthfully, have you watched that goal back, that 40-yard free kick? <laughs> uh, don't know. Triple Maybe figures. Ten, like double figures. That's <laughs> What's a uh, what would you what would you say has been your more prouder moment, scoring in the Champions League or that or that goal? They're two different kind of uh, goals. Obviously, Champions League is uh, a massive thing. Mm-hmm. There's not many people you know that actually scored in that, so that's a massive one. Um, it was also a good one as well because all my family were there and it was at Easter Road. Mm-hmm. Um, I think that was probably a, that meant more, but um, yeah, the free kick obviously looked a bit, a bit better as well. The Scottish Cup final, mm-hmm. um, but yeah, uh, probably go with the one at Easter Road. It just meant a wee bit more. I totally. I remember with that. Uh... With that 40, 40 yard zinger, like that was like on BBC Sport. Like, did it no one like goal of the month? But that was even the men's goals in that were in it, or you were like a contender, eh? Uh, I don't know. I, I don't know if it's the men, but it was definitely one goal of the month for some competition, but it was against like Leon and Barcelona players and that, so mm-hmm. pretty well. <laughs> cool. All right. So, how are, you, how are you guys looking looking this season? He's got, he's, he's got a good squad in that, or? Yeah, it's obviously been tough with COVID and stuff, but um, no, nah, they look good. A um, few new signings, um, a lot of people last year have stayed on, so it's quite good. And then the new coaching staff that have came in are, are really good. So yeah, they look strong. Um, I think the league's better as well now, so it's only good for us to get more competition in the league rather than that one game against City that you wait all year for. So it's good. Mm-hmm. How is uh, how is COVID for you then? Well, obviously you've got like a set training program and that, but were you just having to like train in the house and stuff as well then? Yeah, pretty much same as everyone else. Uh, we got given stuff three times a week, I think it was. We had to do three running sessions a week and then just try and fit in your own. But yeah, it was. I actually never minded it actually. Mm-hmm. Um, it was quite good to get a break from just um, the same old day to day life that you go through. But it, it obviously dragged a wee bit, but. No, I quite enjoyed it. You got to do stuff you, you maybe never got time to do before. Yeah, um, totally. Actually, more than I did do now yeah, when I'm locked down. So. Mm-hmm. Did, they, you, did you get a cap for Scotland? Yeah, I've got two caps for two, Scotland. Two caps it was, aye. I had a, had a check on Wikipedia before that because I knew like, you were in and about the squad, but I wasn't sure if you had had actually made an appearance. Like, when, when, when was that, 2016, 17? Uh, no, it was actually 13. I think 13? So. Is it? Aye, 13. Was that? Jesus. Wikipedia is a liar. Like, I think it says 17 on that. <laughs> Definitely not 17. Like. Right. Uh, right, we'll go We'll go back a bit. So, um, obviously, me and you, we were at the same uh, primary school and obviously went up to secondary school and that, right? Mm-hmm. But uh, my earliest memory of you was, obviously, we played <laughs> played in the same school team. I think it was at primary 3-4 when we had, like, Tommy and that. Yeah. I, can, I, can, I can always remember you. You, you, played up, you played up front back then and you just, you wanted to score all the time and you're a winner. Like, Everybody used to say that, like everybody knew that you were you were going to make it because you had like a different what, what's the word like a different mind frame for like a lot of people that like, you just, you wanted to win all the time. So it's it's obviously it's brilliant to see that you're doing now, and obviously with all your family, and I must be yeah. so proud of you. And it's when, when when did you actually sign for Hibs? Did did you not go to Adina Hibs before? Eh? I was at Adina Hibs for I think maybe two years in total, um, and then there was a coach there from Hibs that came to watch the final. I think we played Hutchie Vale. I think we actually won that one. Mm-hmm. Um, but I was playing boys up till I think I was 11, going on 12 maybe. Because um, I went there and I, I'd only, that was my first time playing just in an old girls team. So mm-hmm. yeah, probably about 11 when I first signed my hips. Mm-hmm. So when you first signed for hips, were you like an attacking minded player or did you just basically go right yeah, back to the Yeah, I went there as, well, I was at Adina Hibs, I was a right back. Yeah, I think I've been in every position now. <laughs> um, and then I, when I first played with Hibs, I played centre mid. And then chop and change between centre mid and up front. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, for a good six years, I was a centre mid, quite attacking. Yeah, it's, it's, it's quite good for your team because you're 
well, you do dominate quite a lot of games, and obviously if you're sitting half, you can see the whole game in that. Eh? So it's quite a it's quite a good position to play in terms of that. But um, do you think you'll, that'll be you for the rest of your career, centre back? <laughs> I'm not moving for there, like no moving. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I very much doubt that I'll move any higher up. But yeah, I, I actually enjoy it. You get to see a lot of the game. Uh, you can see a lot more than actually other players can see. And if I can see a lot more than people in front of me, then it, I can only help them. Um, but yeah, it does get boring sometimes when you're playing that team that just punts the ball forward. You just find yourself running back and forth and back and forth. But the, the league's getting better now, so it's a lot better uh, competition in the league. And you're always competing now, so it's good. To, quite mm-hmm. a different uh, year this time. Uh, I'll ask you this question as well. Can you can you remember like the first like the first moment like you woke up and you were like that? I want to get into football. Can you really like, remember that moment, or do you think it just kind of kind of came on you like through school and that? Uh, I can't remember like thinking to myself like this is what I want to do. I think my dad really drilled it into me that I, well I had my, no much choice. Um, with him beating on my back trying to get me to play football, but I think just in school I was always playing football. I was always when I had a break, I was always there, whereas all my friends were maybe inside. So from a young age, I always knew that I was always going to do something in sport, but maybe not to this level that I thought maybe I was going to get. But, yeah, I think from a young age, it was just a family-oriented um, thing. Even my sister played for a bit. It was quite funny. Um, up front, eh? She was good up front. <laughs> toe bash up front. Um, but no, our family's quite sporty, so... I think if it wasn't football, it'd be some other sport anyway. So yeah, uh, definitely sport. I cause uh, I will go into that as well. Cause you do uh, you do personal training as well, eh? So how, how, yeah, how's, that, how's that going for you? It's quite good. Um, I've got I've, I'm doing all right right now. Obviously with lockdown, it's helped a lot. Because <laughs> totally, yeah, yeah. just sat about doing nothing, um, and now they want to do something about it. So yeah, I'm doing that quite a bit. Um, I managed to build my own gym. Yeah. Oh, I've seen that. Aye. It looks it looks brilliant. Like, aye, it's quality. Yeah. It's good. It's good for them, and then obviously I can do my own thing in it as well, rather than going to gyms and stuff. And it's a bit mm-hmm. different, but yeah, doing well. It's, it's, mm-hmm. it's building up a bit now. So good. Are you, are you still at uni as well just now? No, I finished that. Oh, you finished three years ago, maybe now. Mm-hmm. What, what what was was that? Chill. You were studying. What like what was the title? I uh, did sports and exercise science. So oh, science, it was I. Uh, yeah, sports scientist. Um, uh, some coaching as well in that course. Mm-hmm. So there was a there was different kind of things um, so, throughout the four years. So, uh, so I take it did you, did you do your level three like along along that three years? Uh, I did that uh, in my last year. Um, so I was think obviously thinking in my head trying to think what else I could do because sports science is a really hard job to get so once you've got the degree you need to then do like maybe another year somewhere else or a master's mm-hmm. uh, or even you have to then do voluntary work for mm-hmm. quite before you actually get a job in that uh, industry so I was just get, kind of thinking ahead and um, just done it all off my own back. Mm-hmm. So what's um so, right, so what so what what would be your future plan then? See when you obviously eventually do have to quit football. Now, are you looking to get any coaching or management yeah. or? I probably will uh, one day. It's, I've done it from a young age. I did coaching quite a bit um, in my last few jobs, so I did that um, for a number of years. But I think trying to mix them all together, so a bit of coaching, a bit of personal training, um, and then obviously this the science bit as well. So. I think just recovery of players and activating them in the right way and stuff, um, I think is really important. So maybe something along the lines, mm-hmm. if not probably management, but mm-hmm. not sure. Mm-hmm. So are you um so you think you'll go you'll kind of stay stay with Hibs? Well, I suppose you, it's hard to say if you'll stay stay with Hibs. I think you, you need to watch what you're saying as well. Eh? But have you got have you got like future plans like to just keep keep playing at that obviously the highest level that you can? Yeah, well, obviously, I would like to go professional. Um, mm-hmm. Obviously, Hibs are professional. Yeah, I think they will eventually. Mm-hmm. And yeah. I think they'll need to. You know, mm-hmm. um, so they're not too far behind. Mm-hmm. But yeah, if that offer comes in and it's the right move for me to go and it's the right time, etc., um, mm-hmm. then I, then there will be somebody standing in my way telling me, no, I'm not allowed to go. But it's mm-hmm. just about the right move, the right time and uh, the right team as well. So, yeah, I've always got ambitions to do that and try and get back in the Scotland squad. Um, they, they're all ambitions that maybe I, like I'm 
close to, maybe not close to. So it's just about building and, and trying to get there in the end. But yeah, professionals right. uh, in my head. But you have quite a high. You quite have a high. T- 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 Sorry, I never heard you there. Oh, no, sorry, you, you were just lagging a bit. Aye, because he says he's always, well, not a high tunnel, but you've got a, it's always like a couple of players, not just you guys, but like other teams in, in Scotland and some of the girls go down south, eh? It's like, it's just it's full time. I mean, nobody's going to say no to that, eh? Can it be stupid to, to say no to that? Because you've, you've always had a lot of mates and stuff that's, uh, that moved down there and it just must be like a like a different world. Like, going to, like teams like Chelsea and that, it's like, pff, just like the Premier League, eh? It's just like scary, yeah. like facilities yeah. and that. I've spoke to a few of them, like, it's just a whole different lifestyle, really. Like, they get their breakfast made for them, their lunch, sometimes their dinner, whereas um, I'm here trying to make my breakfast, run to work, rush back to work, yeah. try to fit the gym in, in between that. Like, it's just, you actually sacrifice a lot of your time to football, and once you then get that full time, it's a bit more relaxed. You probably get more time than you think to yourself, so... Yeah, I think they're really lucky to have that and it's all, always an ambition that you want to go do that and I suppose it's the life you want to live, eh? <laughs> That's it. Uh, everybody wants to, to, to play at the highest level and be a footballer. Eh? Well, eh, I'll ask you, could you give like any advice to like any young any young kids like watching, like obviously watching you? Because basically, like, like you, you came, like you're the same as me, like you just come for, come for like a council estate and that and then you've worked yourself up and now you're playing at a, the highest level in Scotland. Have you got any advice to that to them just to keep keep working hard and stuff like that? Yeah, I think well, like some people are uh, well off, some people get better backgrounds, but mm-hmm. I think if you're always there, you're always trying to push to get something you want. To, if you've got a dream, go get it. Um, there's nothing stopping you but yourself. So I think the only barrier is really yourself. So if you can then push over their thoughts that, oh, maybe I'm not good enough, maybe I, I won't make it. But it's just believing in yourself, trying to push that, give yourself that time um, and give 100% everything you do, even if it's helping someone out in the street, holding a door open. It's, it's these wee things that take you far on in life. It's not just being about a footballer, it's actually a person as well. So yeah. just enjoy it as well. I think right now it's probably at the peak of its... Um, the sport, so it's always increasing. You know, the teams are always getting better. The teams are always pumping money into the mm-hmm. left, right, and centre. So, right now, it's probably a good time to, if you want to go and get it, then I think it's it's only in your own hands. So, yeah, just work hard. Um, it doesn't come easy. I think you need to work for it. But once you're there working hard, then then it's definitely achievable. Oh, brilliant. So, see, see when you made the your first appearance for Scotland, was that at Hamden or was it away or? Uh, no, uh, first period, it was away. We were in Finland, actually. Finland. Uh, what, 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 what was that like pulling the, the blue jersey on for the first time? That must have been something special, like. Yeah, it was. It was amazing. I'll never forget that moment. It was. It was really nice. But it's one of those things you dream of and think when you're actually in that situation, you know, you don't realise how, like, how much of an honour it is. Mm-hmm. But when you then step back and think, oh my God, I just got my first cap for Scotland. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's actually amazing. But yeah, it's one of them that you'll never forget and it'll always be in the back of your head that you want to go and do it again. Uh-huh. Yeah, to do it, it was actually my birthday, I think. Was it? Oh, that's, weird. that's... Uh, A different country on your birthday. It was a bit that's... weird, but no, it was, a, it was a good time. It was a good trip. And um, I mind you, I only got like two minutes, but it's better than none, I suppose. <laughs> Definitely an appearance is an appearance. Who cares? Eh? <laughs> <laughs> well, um, so uh, first time you played in the Champions League, what um, was that? Was that Bayern Munich? Was that the one at Easter Road? Not was that your first one? Yeah, that was. Uh, no, so that was a. Uh, no, was it? I think we'd done a group before that. Maybe I'm wrong. I can't remember. What, what was it like? What's it like lining up in the middle and hearing the the Champions League music? <laughs> Was, shitting yourself, uh, be, be truthfully, you shitting yourself. Eh? Well, I, was, uh, I think because it was at Easter Road, and I think the, was, I think two and a half thousand people were there. But I was there. Um, <laughs> like our games, don't know if any, like, you've seen any of them, but you get like I think if you get three hundred, that's a big crowd. So Aye. walk out to that many people with that music blaring in the background, like it was really a special moment. It was, I was actually insane. So like you walked out and then you turned around and just looked and you could just see all your family like waving um, but yeah it was a, an amazing experience and players that you played against were one of them now she's playing for Arsenal I think she's 
uh, scored like over 50 goals. One of the oh, best wow. in the world. And you, it was just one of them, like, you just had to take it in rather than try to play the game. Um, we knew from day one we were never ever going to get a result, but to play against a team like that, statue and quality, it was just a great experience and something that I'll always remember. And you've all, you've also scored in the one as well, so that's um, um, that's extra dubs. Yeah. So what? Um, I'll ask you this question as well, right? Because I've, I've I was wanting to ask you this for ages. So see, like, see teams like Bayern Munich and that. Like, what's the difference between like obviously you guys are in the full time, but I'd, like how how are they like just that level ahead? Is it just cause like they, is it the training or like what what do you think it is nutrition and just just do you think it's just everything? Pretty much everything, yeah. So they just so they just yeah. look so much like taller and like yeah. bigger, stronger. <laughs> it's like you can't get the ball for me. It's mm. but so, it's like if like, it's like if Hibs men's were to play like Bayern Munich, well, it's the same, uh, eh? Pretty yeah. much the same, yeah. So the German league that was that's been big from like day one. So they've put a lot on back and into the German league. So at that time they were like at their peak, whereas we were maybe just coming through trying to get two nights or three nights training in and um, whereas they were day two times a day getting their food getting their recovery all done for them so I think they were maybe four years ahead of us whereas we were four years behind um, everything behind them so they were always going to be that that much better um, but yeah I think obviously Scotland is a country where we're still behind even now um, oh, aye. Aye. Mm-hmm. so it's just the same with women so pretty much the men are actually quite close now the women are getting there um but yeah just resources as well we don't have enough facilities in scotland to actually give the players that good facility like there's the orium and htc the hearts academy like yep. the rangers celtic and all that but for different countries they've got a lot more and they've they've had them for years and years whereas we're maybe just making them now or just transition into that part now so yeah I think it's just the country is a bit behind in general and then the clubs within each country are, are miles behind so yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, uh, I can no definitely so uh, I will touch on the Scottish Cup so how many times you've won the Scottish Cup so far uh, five I think <laughs> can't remember five. what uh, what's been the one that stands out is it the one with the men's 2016 I think it's that one yeah, I think we did we win it the same year. I used it. I used it. Uh, Sixteen. Yeah. Oh. I think that was maybe the first one we'd won as well. Oh, was it? was it? Won it, and then I think that was the first time we'd won it, and um, for a long time. So, I think obviously just to to win it uh, on penalties was obviously nice. Um, it was a hard way to win, but to go through the full game extra time and then go to penalties and win it. Um, with the team we had then as well, like half of them are now I think in England or. America or Sweden um, so half that team's probably playing professional now so mm-hmm. yeah probably play that one um, as well just the same year as the Hibs it was, a, it was a good time to be at the club it was like the atmosphere around the club was really good and they were giving us a lot more than they maybe have before so I think f- for them to then win it and then us to go do the same it just it maybe helped our um, time as well to then let them put money into us and get the backing from them because we kind of done the exact same as them so it was good um but yeah the one in 2017 as well that was quite special because we'd won it in the 90 minutes whereas before we'd never actually won against city in 90 minutes before that i don't mm-hmm. think but that was the first time we'd done that and obviously to beat city at that time was like a massive thing so between yeah. the two probably quite tight yeah Yep. So, uh, so you uh, do you train full time? Is it five five days a week you guys train? Uh, so we do Tuesday, Thursday, Friday nights, uh, on Thursday morning, and then just play a Sunday. So. Because uh, um, I was I was watching that. Uh, I don't know if you watched that kind of heart stuff minute last night, and it's like well, obviously you are the same. Like you've got like full time jobs on top of that. People are studying, and you still got the dedication to go along to training. Like that's. That's quite, it's quite it's quite rough, eh? Like making training every night, grinding and having a game, recovering, work, and just like that's that cycle all the time. How how do you how do you find that? Is it can it be mentally tough and physically tough as well at times? Yeah, I think both of them mentally and physically, it's definitely mm-hmm. tough. I think to go, we used to train 
uh, we used to get up at half six, train at seven, seven till half eight in the morning. Then you would rush to work at nine or uni at nine. You then get in. Sometimes if you're at uni till three, you get in, you get an hour, you're leaving again for training to get there at five. So sometimes you'd actually be in the house. For, you'd leave at seven in the morning. You wouldn't get back to your house till eight, nine at night. Um, but people don't think that we do all this thing. We They just think we play football and we're just trying to get as good as the men. But to be fair, we'll, we'll never be there. We'll never be as good as the men. We'll never be on that same radar. But, yeah, I think the amount of sacrifices we put in, like, we train Friday nights. So, I know, again, a lot of the men there probably out most Saturday nights or even Sunday nights after the game. So, we're training Friday night. You can't go out on a Friday Mm. Saturday obviously you're, it's the day before the game so you can't and then Sunday right, social and that. Mm. Just, so you do miss out on a lot of social as well so when mm. I was younger it was quite hard to go to parties and be like no I'm not drinking because you know like what, you're the boring one in the corner eh? Aye. Aye. Um, so it was hard to do that but yeah I think just putting all the sacrifice in and then obviously at the end of it you, you kind of be like look back and say yeah maybe I have but is it worth, it? worth it yeah probably it is worth it mm. but yeah at the time it is really tough it is hard Sometimes you have days where you think, why the hell am I doing this? But at the end of it, you do... Just have a look at your trophy cabinet, how much you've won. If anybody <laughs> says it's not worth it, hey, then there you go. <laughs> yeah, so, but uh, I like, put in a lot of work for it, but it's definitely worth it. Aye, uh, brilliant, superb. Right, final question, because I don't want to keep you to it uh, any longer. Um, can you pinpoint, so far in your career, can you pinpoint a one moment that's been your proudest so far? I kind of touched a bit on like, the proudest moments we've shown in the Champions League and stuff. Is there another moment, like, or is it, is it a Scottish Cup win? Is it playing in the Champions League? Is it scoring in the Champions League? Is it that 40-yard free kick? Like, what is the what is the one moment that you could pick out right now? Mm. Again, there's that many, yeah? <laughs> <laughs> um, I'd probably go with the one in the Champions League. I just think because nah. the tournament before, so we had to qualify for that stage as well, so... Mm. We're, we played three tough games, got through them, and then we came back and obviously got that draw. Um, don't know why, but we thought we actually might have won that game. I'm not sure why. <laughs> yeah, but to to do it again at Easter Road, and as a young age, I always dreamed of scoring at Easter Road. So yep. to do that um, with all my family there, it was that was probably the most special moment in my football career. But yep. I think all of them just got get forgetting about when you're older, and you just I think. I mean, I could probably list off a lot of them to you, but yeah, just little tiny things like playing that school tournament at um, Royal High or whatever it was. Ah, Royal High. Little tiny mm. things like you always remember them. Ah, definitely. Uh, no. You know, they're always helping you then to go on and and make you the player you are today. But yeah, probably the one at Easter Road that was probably the, the most special one. Right. Well, thanks very much for coming on. You're a, you're an inspiration to a lot of well, not just not just young girls, but young boys and that as well so just keep doing what you're doing it's brilliant what you're doing you've got to new levels as well so very we're all we're all proud of you in this household as well as you as you can imagine but uh, is there anything any any last wee bits that you want to you want to touch on that you want to say or anything no i think obviously just right now it's obviously a tough time for everybody i think everybody that's struggling right now i think there's always a positive in something um, and there's always light at the end of the tunnel so mm-hmm. if anyone is struggling right now just speak to somebody or even yep. just get out of the yep. house for 20 minutes go a walk or or listen to some music something like that because mm-hmm. it is really tough I think if I never yep. had sport I'd really struggle um, yep. and helped me a lot through this time and if people don't have sport then I'd imagine that they are struggling so yeah just if anyone needs even a chat or whatever yeah. Um, that's a, that's I ah, sorry. That's that's another reason why like I'm doing these these podcasts as well, Ken. It's just even if somebody's having a bad day, just come on and just just talk away for twenty minutes. Or something. Yeah. It's nice to get a wide range of people, and it's ah, yeah. thanks very much for for coming on, eh? So you're welcome. Right, thanks, thanks very much. Yeah. Keep doing what you're doing, right? Take care, yeah. eh? I'll see Take you care, later. Bye. Cheers, thank you.